In the last video, we looked at how to produce cross tabulations in SPSS. For each analysis, we cross tabulated two variables and SPSS generated a simple table showing the frequency counts in each group and each subgroup. But it's sometimes useful to produce cross tabulations that include percentages as well as or instead of frequencies. In this video, we're going to see how SPSS can do this for you, look at some of the options it gives you, and explore some of the issues that arise when displaying percentages. We'll still be looking at ethnicity and employment, so you need to go to the Analyze menu, scroll down to Descriptive Statistics, and choose Cross Tabs. You'll see that SPSS has remembered your last analysis, which this time is useful for us, so we won't press the Reset button. This time, press the Cells button on the right-hand side of the dialog box. In the new dialog box, you'll see that the Observed option is selected under the Counts heading. This just means that the table you produced included the actual number of cases in each subgroup. A subgroup is just a group within a group, so while we may think of white respondents as a group, white respondents who are unemployed are a subgroup. If you remember, our table showed the two ethnic categories divided up according to three different employment statuses. So in total, we have six different subgroups. This time, we're going to produce a table with percentages, so we need to select an option from under the percentages heading. As we're only going to have percentages in this table, we'll first click on the observed option under the counts heading to deselect this. We then have to decide whether we want percentages in rows or columns. Students often find this decision confusing, so we'll look at both options and see which is the most useful in this case. For this table, just select Row under the Percentages heading. If you remember, our rows show the two different ethnic categories, so it is the ethnic group that will be divided up into percentages that will total 100. It shows what percentage of each ethnic group is in each employment category. This is useful when comparing outcomes in groups that are of very different sizes. Now press Continue and then OK. As usual, the results are displayed in the Output window. The first table is the same as last time, just letting us know that one case hasn't been included in the analysis because of missing data. The next table is more interesting. Instead of displaying the results as frequencies, SPSS has calculated percentages. All three rows of the table provide us with useful information. If we look at the bottom row, we can see that just under 56% of the respondents are employed, just less than 5% are unemployed, and nearly 40% are economically inactive. But what we're really interested in is the relationship between ethnicity and employment. If we compare the proportions of the two ethnic categories in employment, we can see that while 55% of white respondents are employed, the rate for non-white groups is higher at 60%. But it's also the case that non-white respondents are more likely to be unemployed. Their unemployment rate is over 10%, while the rate among white respondents is around 4%. So how can the non-white group have both higher rates of employment and higher rates of unemployment? The answer lies in the third column, which records economic inactivity. Economic inactivity includes a variety of situations, such as being a student, suffering from long-term illness that prevents you from working, or doing unpaid domestic labour. Importantly, however, it also includes those who are retired, which is something we're going to look at in a bit more detail. If you look at the economic activity column, you'll see that the odd situation I've just described is explained by the differences in the proportions of the two ethnic groups classified as economically inactive. This proportion is much lower for the non-white group than for the white respondents, meaning that it can make sense for non-whites to have both higher employment and unemployment rates than whites, as long as they have a correspondingly lower rate of economic inactivity. This raises a very interesting question. Why are the rates of economic inactivity between the two groups so different? It may be because the age profiles of the two ethnic groups are different. 
If there are a larger proportion of white respondents who are above the retirement age, this could be one factor that could explain the difference in the proportions of economically inactive respondents. We can check this by cross-tabulating ethnicity with age group. We know how to do this by now. We'll go to the Analyze menu, scroll down to Descriptive Statistics, and select Cross-Tabs. We don't want to change much, just one of the variables, so we don't need to press Reset. But if we select Employment Status in the column box, you'll notice that the arrow by the box changes direction. If you click on this arrow, this variable will be moved back to the list on the left. From the list on the left, select Age Group, and click on the arrow next to the column box, which will now have switched back to point to the right. Select this, and click on the OK button. Looking at the output, we can see that we've still got one case missing, but it's the second table that is the most interesting. If we look at the age distribution of the two ethnic groups, we can see that the proportion of white respondents aged 55 and over is larger than the corresponding proportion for non-white respondents. If we add the older groups up, we can see that about 45% of white respondents are aged 55 and over, compared to roughly 16% of non-white respondents. This means that there is likely to be a much larger proportion of retired people among white respondents than among non-whites. And if we look at those over the age of retirement at 65, we can do a rough calculation that while around 28% of white respondents are likely to be over the retirement age, only 10% of non-white respondents are in that age group. This difference in the age profile of the two groups is likely to account for at least some of the differences in the proportions reported as economically inactive. This video has hopefully shown you how useful percentages can be and how one analysis can raise questions that lead to another. In the next video, we'll revisit the use of percentages in cross-tabulation and also looking at other ways SPSS can generate useful information when comparing two categorical variables.